James Holder for Eiffel TV in association with Matt Gym My Bayer. I'm in the Pro SW Gym in Loughton today. With me, I've got none other than Idris Elba. What's happening now? <laughs> are you, Idris, mate? I'm fine, thanks. Crash, right? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I love the wire, mate. I've got to say, it's fantastic. Thank you very much. Hoping to get the James Bond gig, but you never know. Let's see <laughs> what happens. Listen, that's not a bad shout. Ain't a bad shout. I'm joined by a boxing manager and promoter, Mickey Amu. How are you, Mick? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Good, good. good. Um, how's things are going? Obviously, we've, you've got Richard Comey. Um, yeah. You saw him out in Las Vegas. Fantastic win from him against Mamadoff. I yeah. That right. Mamadoff, yeah, it was a fantastic... The whole experience was fantastic. You know, to get the call to say that your fighter is going to be headlining in Vegas on a show is, is uh, an unbelievable experience for us. And uh, for the whole team, we went out there and it was great. It was really good. It was Richard was a bit... Nervous, you know what I mean? <laughs> from, you know what I mean, your call to Vegas is a, from Ghana to your call to Vegas is a massive, Indeed. you know what I mean, step. But he done it really well, and you know, we're really pleased that we got through it. Yeah, winning fighter as well, looking at his record 17 and 1, with So going in to, to fight someone like that, top, top in the big field, Richard done with the pressure very well. How would you yeah, well they, well, they well they picked us out. They called us. They, they thought, they looked at Richard and thought they could do a number on us. And uh, we was up for the challenge, you know. I believe in Richard's ability, so we're not ducking anybody, you know what I mean? And it was a great opportunity for us. Although, you know what I mean, the fight was supposed to be scheduled over 12 rounds. When we got there, they pulled it down to 10 rounds, so that was a bit of a sticking point. But Richard got done his job, he stopped him in the eighth round, and it was fantastic. Richard's got the Commonwealth title as well as the IBF Intercontinental strap at the moment. That's correct, yeah. Um, when can we anticipate seeing him defending this Commonwealth? I thought when he won that against Buckland, I thought we, that, that would open the well, you'd, big fight. Well, you'd like comment. to think that it's a British title, it's a, it's a British Commonwealth title. You'd like to think that he would have got the opportunity to fight some more of the great lightweights that we have in, in the country at the yeah. moment. But yeah. we've not had one call, we've not had no one offer no one offered to come and take the belt of Richard, which is a surprising to me. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, you look to Richard here to challenge himself against, you know what I mean, the likes of, uh, you know what I mean, the best lightweights in the country. And you'd think that you'd get some kind of, I mean, we respect Gary Buckland, and Gary Buckland was up there. He had just come off two fights with Gavin Reese, mm -hmm. and he took the challenge up. And you'd think that, you know what I mean, we'd get more offers, but we haven't really. So it's not been a, it's not been a major problem, but at the end of the day, we're number four in the IBF. We got the IBF Intercontinental title as well, so we're looking now for world rankings. We've still got an opportunity to defend the Commonwealth by December, and we'll look to that. We've we've been in contact with Malcolm Classen's people. They've contacted us. They're interested in fighting for that. Come on to that. Yeah, they're interested in fighting for that. So hopefully we can get something done there. But we'll see how we go. You know, at the end of the day, Richard is now ranked number four in the world. So we. We're going to look to try and solid, solidify Richard's position in the world rankings and go from there. Richard signed recently promotional terms with Saldens, with Salden Promotions in Germany. Yeah. Um, what, how does this help Richard gain moving him forward from here? And where, where will we anticipate the Saldens putting him on? Well, it, it, first and foremost, it, uh, we'd like to thank the Saldens for showing an interest in signing Richard. I mean, I had good conversations with Nisi when I met him first in Santa Monica. And then obviously when I came back, we struck a deal and, and Nisi's been very instrumental in moving Richard on and getting him a couple of fights in Denmark, moving him on uh, and was instrumental in getting the fight in Vegas. Um, it, it helps Richard because now he's got a solid platform. He's got a platform of a, of a major, major promoter behind him, which he didn't have before. And now that we can look to get some decent fights and get him Richard onto the world level where, we, where he needs to be. I mean, he's two fight, we feel he's two, three fights away from a world title shot. So, and we, with Salens there, we, we, we're close, we're close. So the lightweight division is absolutely buzzing at the moment. Terry Flanagan, world champion. Yes. Gary Mackie has got the WBA interim title. Yeah. Anthony Collar again with Darlis Perez. How far do you think Richard is from being in the mix for these fighters? He's in, in the your mix. Opinion? He's in the mix. He's in the mix. He's 22 and 0. So, I mean... Why is he not being spoke about then? Why are people because, not talking well, about when they're talking about these other Well, when you, look, when you look at... I mean, none of them have really come readily to fight Richard. I mean, when you look at his record, people in the know know how good Richard is. Everybody knows how good Richard is. So it's up to the boxers' promoters, the boxers' managers to sit down. If they want their fighters to fight the best, and we all want great entertainment for the fans. Richard is a fighter that the fans would love to see. You'd love to see him fight an Anthony Corona or a Derry Matthews or a Cherry Flanagan. We take the opportunity tomorrow a Kevin Mitchell or Ricky Burns. Uh, Luke Campbell, I don't think he's quite ready yet at the moment. But we'd fight any one of them. Richard is ready to fight any one of them. But listen, if they don't come to the table, we've got other tables that we can go to. So it's not a problem. But everybody knows Richard's qualities. He's been spoke about quietly in corridors. Do you know what I mean? But no one wants to speak about him in the open. 
Well, he's here, he's in the UK. We're going to Germany tomorrow to go and see the Salons to watch the, the WBA title fight with Bremer in, yeah. in Dresden. Yeah. And then we'll be back preparing for uh, ne uh, the date or when we get our next fight. And then we'll go from there. Either way, Richard is not going to go away. He's number four in the IBF, he's number 12 in the WBC. He's not going away. People are not talking about him, hoping that he'll go away. But now we've signed with the Salons, and now Richard is in the rank to where he is. He's not just going to quietly walk away and go away and people are going to forget about. He's still the Commonwealth champion. He's still the IBF Intercontinental champion. And someone's going to have to come up and step up to the plate to fight him. Well, he's got both of them belts, as you said, he's now got the Salons behind him. Before, it was probably looked at as a high risk, low reward fight. Yeah. With them belts and now obviously with the promotional company, yeah. surely we can now see him, someone come in to challenge him in some big fights. That's the question that we're going to ask and that's the question that we're asking today and that's what question we're going to be asking in the next few weeks. At the end of the day, if these fighters, if these lightweights are classing themselves as world class, I class Richard as having world class potential. I don't class him as world class yet because he's not got a world title, but I do believe he's got world class potential. And to be able to get a world title, he has to fight other world-class potential fighters out there. So we're here to look at those fighters, to offer to, to lay down the gauntlet and say, listen, if any one of you want to come and fight, we're here and we're ready. Clarsen, one person who has been very vocal and yeah. looking to call out Richard is, is Clarsen. He's yeah. 33 years old, he's very experienced. Is, yeah. that, is that a viable fight for Richard at this moment in time? Yes, it's something that we're looking at. Obviously, Carson is he's, he, he can, he's a former world champion. He's a former IBF super featherweight world champion. So you can't ignore that. Anyone who's been a world champion deserves, deserves credit. You can't knock them for that. So we're looking at that. I've spoken to his manager, Johnny Roy, and we've had great conversations, and we think it's a great fight. No, but at the end of the day, we need to sit down. I need to sit down with Nisi Salen and see if we can get that fight on, where we can get it on and how it's going to benefit both fighters. Mm. So that's something that we're looking at. And at least he's been able to step up to the plate and offer the gauntlet to Richard and say, listen, I'm ready to fight you. No one else has. So I'll give him great credit for that. Big fight in Africa, that. But is that sort of, are you looking past that now with Richard? I we mean, look, he's dominated the African market. Are you now looking you, you the world stage? You can't look past a world champion or a former world champion because there are experiences there that he's had that Richard hasn't had. So no matter what, when you get in a fight with a world champion, you have to respect that because there's always something that you can learn. So we're not looking past that at all. It's, it's something that we're really looking into, we're really interested in. And as I say, I have to speak to the Salons and then we'll go from there. But we'll take one step at a time, we'll look at the next, the next fight with Richard and we'll go from there. All right, well, listen, I look forward to hearing some news imminently. You've been following the comedy story for a long time, I think. Yeah, you have. And you've done a cracking job with him. Yeah, right and you've you supported us fantastically. And I mean, great credit to iFilm London to, to, to look to broaden the horizons of the, of the rest of the UK fans to see that boxing isn't just about the domestic scene, it's about what other people can bring into the domestic scene and bring in the mix, because we can all learn from that. So we, we want to thank you very much for that That's as right. well. I just want a shirt with triangles and, uh, <laughs> and circles on it, and I'm happy. Yeah, well, we're going to get you one of them. I don't know if we can get a double, X, a double uh, XL. You're, you're, pushing double XL? you're pushing yeah. it here, Hopefully we get a double XL for you. You know, <laughs> we, know we like to wear them baggy so that we can move and dance, you know? so we like get you one of those. I like that. Listen, thank you for your time. Thanks no for problem at all. I'll catch you again real soon, Mick. Thank, thank you, you very much.